that, man. Uh, Chris Copeland, everybody, the legend. Uh, appreciate Chris for uh, stopping by. We've been uh, trying to plan this for a while now. Uh, I, think, well, I think I like reached out to you uh, and I had no idea it was your birthday. I was like, all right, we can't do this on your birthday, man. All right. But, uh, but hey, appreciate you uh, taking the time. And uh, yeah, this is awesome. No, man, I get it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I don't expect everybody to know my birthday or anything like that. <laughs> um, but no, I'm excited, excited to be a part of this thing and hopefully uh, have a great conversation. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, no, because like I remember scheduling it and I think we found a time and I was like, all right, like Monday or something like that. And then I saw all these posts for your birthday. I was like, man, I can't do that to you right now. <laughs> I can't get you stuck here. But uh, yeah, man, I hope it, hope it went well. And uh, yeah, glad, glad, you're, glad you're here with us. Um, yeah, so maybe just talk to us about how you, uh, you know, got started and, and grew a passion for the game of basketball. I uh, started with, um, started young with my brother. Um, he put the ball in, in the crib, I guess you could say. Um, I've always chased around watching him. Um, and then uh, it grew from there. Long story short, I always wanted to follow in his footsteps and I wanted to be as best, as good as I could for him. And, um, you know, yeah. it, that passion took me a long way. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, you know, you had a, uh, you know, great career, man. Um, you know, you played in co you played college ball, of course, and, um, you know, you played overseas. Um, you know, for someone that's played, you know, that's had a lot of success, you know, over, overseas and, and, and within the NBA, you know, how, how do those two experiences compare to one another? I mean, International play is like you know pretty crazy right now with you know guys like Doncic and Kristaps and and Giannis. Uh, you know you're, you're someone that's you know had the opportunity to play in, in the NBA and, and internationally. Um, you know was there experience that that you uh, preferred more than one than the other or? Um, no, nah, man. It's I think that's what they they say apples and oranges. You know I think it's. Uh, I like them both. I like both experiences. They both have their, their advantages and, and disadvantages. I mean, I think it was cool to, to travel and see the world. You know, that's, that's a unique experience being able to play overseas, play against top competition. Um, and it was good to be home too. <laughs> so, I mean, I, did, uh, I really enjoyed my time overseas. It, you know, you, the goal is always to play at the highest level, which is the NBA. And I, I, got the, I got the opportunity to do that. But I'm also happy I got the opportunity to play overseas and I had some uh, best memories from life yeah. overseas, you know? So I grew up over there. It feels, it feels good to be able to say I did that too. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. Uh, pretty, pretty awesome story. Um, you know, you also played for, um, so it, within 2006, you got picked up by the Fort Worth uh, Flyers. You played with like J.J. Barea, Lou Williams, you know, guys like that who also had, you know, very successful careers in the NBA. You know, overall, what was the mood of that team like no, knowing everyone's trying to battle the GoPro. Um. Well, it, it, it's 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 an eye opener. You know, the, my D league experience was an eye opener. I had an uh, experience with uh, another team out of Colorado too. I don't think they're still in the D league anymore. But mm -hmm. um, it's an eye opener for me. It was it was good to see what <clears throat> how many guys were outside the league and how super talented they were. And it reminded me how much more work I had to do, how much higher I had to continue to continue to climb. Um, but it's fun being around that energy. You know, everybody had the same goal. Everybody was really focused on figuring out how to get to that next level. Um, it was it was like we're all in, in training, and it was it was cool to find so many people like minded like myself. Uh, you know, I learned a lot there. Yeah, yeah. No, you probably had like a ton of support from uh, friends and family as well. You know, during that time. Um, yeah. Do you remember? You know, you know, because that process must have been tough. You know, to try and stay in that mentality. You know, how did you keep motivated? You know. Um, you know, did you have a lot of support during that time as well? Uh, yeah, for sure. But I mean, I, I, I'm, I've been very blessed to have an incredible family that's always been behind me. Um, incredible circle of friends that have always been behind me. Um, but when it's time to go to work, you know, people ain't just just tapping you or reminding you they love you. Yeah. But, you know what I mean, it doesn't work like that. Get in your you get in your zone, you get in your pocket. Um, it's you against the world. You know, sometimes it feels like that. Um, uh, that it is literally you against the world and you got to figure out ways to, to stay in that that right mindset that's productive you know and using that using that um as a challenge and, and trying to overcome those situations that are in front of you 
You know, it's not it's not easy to do anything that you want to do. You know what I mean? Um, at a high level, but it's worth it if you put put forward for the work. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. Hey, it worked out great for you, man. I mean, you know, in 2012, you joined the Knicks, right? And you played with guys like Melo, um, Amari, uh, you know, iconic team, Kenyon Martin, I believe, Jason Kidd, Rasheed Wallace, um, yeah. Jason Chandler. Um, you know, take us through, you know, that first day in the locker room when, when you joined the Knicks. Um, did you feel intimidated or did you feel like this sense of rush and excitement, um, you know, because that must have been awesome. Intimidated, no. Uh, excited, nervous, anxious, all that other. Scared sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not scared of, not intimidated by you know the guys in the locker room for sure not. But um, I was uh, appreciative of being there. Um, nervous about what it was really going to be like when, when I actually got a chance to hit the floor, just to feel the actual garden and all that whatnot. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty with that. You always feel like you, you can play, but, you know, until you prove it to yourself, it doesn't mean anything. So, um, you know, you get those those nerves and that type of anxiousness. That's, that's real. I'd, I'd be lying to you if I, I said I wasn't human and I didn't feel those things. Yeah. Yeah, I felt yeah. all of that, but I wasn't intimidated by anybody. Yeah. Damn, good for you, man. Yo, I'd be freaking out. Like, I'd be like, yo, damn, like, I'm <laughs> playing in Madison Square Garden. Like, I'd be like, damn. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I remember uh, – you know, where you were when, when you got that call, um, you know, that, that. Yeah. Yeah, I was at the office. They played a trick on me. It's one of my favorite stories. Um, you know, they brought me into the office because it's the last day of cuts. So they're going, you know, we're sorry, we're going to bring guys in. Um, and it was uh, Woody, um, Grunwald, and Alan Houston. And they're like, uh, hey, man, um, you know, today's our last day of cuts. And we're sorry, we're going to have to tell you. I'm used to getting no's all the time. I'm used to getting cut. And, uh, so I thought it was just going to be another no. And they're like, I'm sorry to tell you, you're not going to be one of them. And then they all like start laughing at me. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, I mean, damn. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was, uh, it was yeah. a great moment. And, you know, they just said, you know, you got, this is not a guaranteed contract. You got to make sure you work work hard every day. And, um, you know, I just gave them a big thank you. I mean, the first person I called was my mom. You know, like, we did it. So it felt good. Yeah, no, man. Good for you, man. That's awesome. That's an awesome story. Um, yeah, I mean, so that season, you guys were, I believe you guys were the two seed, and um, you won the first series against uh, the Boston Celtics. Um, my own Boston Celtics, it's tough to say, but uh, uh, they, they were the seven seed at the time. Um, what was the energy um, in the locker room knowing you guys were playing, you know, such an iconic team with, you know, Pierce, KG, Rondo, um, Ray, and, you know, that, that's your first year as well. Um, and, and, you know, what a, what a crazy first year that must have been, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, even just being in my own locker room, I knew we were – I felt like we had a better team for, for sure. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But it was still like you're looking across, you're seeing KG, you're seeing Ray Allen, you're seeing Paul Chris, you're seeing, you know, all the guys that have on that team. And it was like, this is, these, these are guys I've been watching for years, you know, yeah. obviously. And, and yeah, you can't help but to feel some of that, like, wow, um, you know, this is, and we're in the playoffs. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pretty sure, Jason Terry, I'm pretty sure. Was he? Jason Terry. Wow, I think Jason Terry was, no, he might have still been in Dallas. I don't remember that. But um, I, I, I'm, I, I remember feeling like, you know, all these guys I was watching on TV, now we got to get through them in the playoffs. You know, it was a special, special time. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's crazy, man. So do you remember, like, that day in the locker room? Like, to, like, to, um, like did Amari or, or Melo, like, say something in the locker room? Like, was there any, like, crazy speech, like, throughout that series or any memory that come to mind or not? Nah? nah, we weren't that rah-rah type team. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. It wasn't. I won't, I won't pretend. Um, we had guy. We had leaders. You know, we had Rasheed was a big vocal guy. Um, Jason Kidd was a natural leader. Um, Carmelo led by you know example, just going out and just destroying everybody. You know, we had a lot of guys we, we trusted with team guidance. But you know, Woody was our guy. Woody was Woody was the guy that we we trusted yeah. to lead the lead the lead the um, lead the group. He did a great job of that. I mean, we had so much experience. We didn't really need a lot of right around. You know, I'm yeah. 27, 28 year old rookie. You know, Pablo Prigioni is another rookie, 35, 36, yeah. something like that. Yeah. You know, like we, it's not much you can really tell us at that point that we need to get motivated. We know, we know 
Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Who were, who were uh, you closest with on that team? Like, who were you most tight with? Oh, Iman Shump- Iman Shumper. Um, he was. He's, he's still one of my one of my best friends. You know, Chump is a guy that's always been authentic and a guy I respect because of his work ethic. Um, yeah. His dedication to the craft is like, I, I haven't seen so many people go as hard as him. And, and we, we competed a lot, so we have a, a respect as, as yeah. you know, competitors. For each other. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. He's, he's awesome, man. How's, how's he doing? Is he doing all right? Have you talked to him? Yeah, he's good. Yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Not too long ago. We're, we're going to be connecting real soon. So he, yeah, he's doing still, man. That's awesome. So um, have you... Uh, have you like talked to Melo since too, or um, you know, have you heard from him, or um, you know, or do you remember any conversations you had with Melo, or? Oh, you hear me? Oh. Yep. So can you hear me? No, you're chilling. you're chilling. Yeah, no, it's all good, man. Like I said, we're low key. You know, we we're low key here. So, um, yeah, no, I, I guess uh, one thing I was gonna ask is like, do you remember um, like the last conversations you had with like Carmelo, or um, you know, do you still stay in touch with them today, or is there anything? No, I mean, we don't talk all the time. I won't pretend like that's that we're besties, but it's mutual respect. We see each other in passing a lot, and yeah. you know, he's he's definitely one of my favorite teammates. On the, and um, he's an underrated teammate. You know, I yeah. like to give the stories of how he's picked me up <clears throat> after uh, tough moments. So, you know, for me, I, got, I have nothing but the utmost respect for him. And, you know, I hope he continues his career um, on the high note that it's been going. You know, I'm glad they let him back in and he's showing people he still deserves to be there. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome, man. Yeah, because do you remember, like, any, like – specific conversation like that he did to like pick you up or um you know, yeah yeah I took a, um in the playoffs I took one of our last shots not the last shot um missed it um I shot, I shot the ball okay that get that that day so I felt like you know I was, the play was designed to give him the ball and they kind of like switched they switched and they like seemed to like trap him right. and then in, in the moment I'm like all right sh- all right I'm open so <laughs> you know what I mean anybody know me I, not too shy about that part. Yeah. So uh, I let it go and it didn't fall for me. And I remember being in the locker room, I looked at Melo, I was like, man, I probably should figure out how to get you the ball. Because it, it wasn't it wasn't an easy pass to get to him. It didn't feel like it was going to be an easy pass. And um, he was like, don't do that. Don't 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 even start playing that game with your mind. Just, you know, it is what it is. And uh, that was that was a big moment for me. Like, I, 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 had, I always had respect for him. I knew him, I knew him way before. Uh, I played with the Knicks and always had respect for him. Um, but like that, that was one of those moments that like, it's going to ha- be hard for anybody to knock him off, off of a uh, pedestal of the team Knicks that I have. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. That's, that's a dope story. Um, yeah. Do you, do you also have like any uh, memories of like interacting with like Spike Lee? Cause he was probably like a crazy fan, right? Courtside. Did he, did he, what was Spike's he? cool. Man. Yeah. I've, I've, uh, a few times, like, uh, um, you know, the whole New York thing was, was crazy. Like, uh, just being in, on a good team in the city, you know, the city gets behind me. There's a lot of New Yorkers that are, like, you know, popular people. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I got to hang out with Spike. Um, this is some other, some other celeb that, you know, I don't want to get down, you know, start name dropping, but it was, it was cool. You know, it was really, really blessed to be in that city. And that's an underrated part of, the, uh, underrated part of being a Nick is, yeah. you know, that access, especially if you're doing well. And, and I, I still can't believe it sometimes. Yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. So, did you guys just go out and like hang out and stuff, or? Uh, we've 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 had dinner. I won't lie. I won't lie about that. Him and my ex, and myself and my ex fiance, we all we all had we had pasta one time. We yeah. we connected on other other situations, other other times. And um, I can text when he like he had some success in a couple, uh, like a 
a year or two ago. I'm not sure. So. Yeah. Congratulations. Again, I won't pretend we're besties, but. Yeah. No. Hey, man. That's that's dope. That's awesome, man. That's a great dude. I've always had good good interactions with him. So. Yeah. No. That that's sick, man. That's dope. Um. Yeah. I mean, you you in 2013, uh, you signed the two year deal with the Pacers. Um. You know. Was that a tough change moving from, you know, uh, New York to Indiana or? Say it again. Oh, like, uh, so in 2013, right, you signed the, uh, you signed the deal with the Pacers. Um, you know, overall, like, talk about that move, you know, playing in, in Madison Square Garden to, um, you know, playing with, you know, guys like Paul George on the uh, Pacers, another great team at the time. Yeah, it was tough, man. It was, uh, I didn't want to go there. I've been mean, honest about that on record. Um, but it was, you know, Paul George is another great. Like we got, we were super close um, while I was while I was here. Um, I had big respect for him. He came and checked on me when I was going through my situation. I, again, another guy is very hot and personal, good, great teammate. Um, uh, David West, the guy I still, you know, keep in contact with to this day. I, I, I still learn a lot from our conversations, and he's got a lot of good things coming out soon. Yeah, I can go down a list. I don't want to forget names, but yeah. I just. Some, some really awesome teammates when I was while I was here in Indiana. And, um, it grew on me. I didn't. I didn't want to be there at first. Yeah. It was cool. <laughs> yeah. No. That's that's awesome, man. Yeah. Because Hibbert was on that team too. Um, you know, who were who were yeah. you closest with <laughs> on on the uh, on the Pacers? You think? Say it again. Who were you closest with on the Pacers? Like at, at that time, like. <clears throat> with, uh, I had a few guys. I was real close with Sloan, your boy, uh, Lance. PG, I hung out with PG a lot. Um, George Hill, I hung out with a lot. Jan, I hung out with a lot. Um, this was this was a pretty Rasul, um, Rasul Butler, Lord, Lord rest his soul. Um, uh, it was it was a it was a closer group, you know. Like a lot of teams I played for, it was like factions, yeah. and, you know. Yeah. Um, but that that was a not the whole team, but a lot right. of guys. Pretty much always together. It was, it was a good group. Yeah. So you guys like hung out a lot, like as a team. It was like more team. team I wouldn't team. say a whole team, but you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Four yeah, of us yeah. here. Four of us here. Yeah. You yeah. know, sometimes do the whole team thing, like you know, for my birthday or something. Like I, I was kind of adamant about us always yeah. doing some some kind of something together. So you'll get maybe not even the whole team then, but you'll get like eight to ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, you try to do. You try to have everybody together as much as possible because I think that builds basketball chemistry. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was – it was everybody rocked with each other. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, was, what was, uh, was Lance pretty chill? What was he like as a team? Yeah, 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 Lance super chill. <laughs> yeah, no. I, no, man. I love, I love Lance. He's, uh, he's another one of my favorite teammates. He's just a guy that's energy – his energy every day is, is infectious, man. Makes you want to get up and – uh, keep going because a guy like me, I, I'm, I'm moody as hell. So like, I don't always have energy. It's always like ray of positivity. He's always, always leading. Like even just the warm ups, he's coming in, he's being funny. And, yeah. like, he picks the team energy. Up, you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, no, that's, that's great guy. yeah, no, great that's guy. dope. Yeah, no, that's dope, man. And, and you know that year too. Um, you know, you guys make it to the Eastern Conference uh, Finals, I believe, and you guys play the Heat. And you know that's when like uh, Lance like did the the Lance and LeBron were you know going at it and Lance did like the the blowing in LeBron's ear and all that drama. Uh, um, but that that was a great series. I mean, my against Miami. Um, you know, talk about the energy playing in the Eastern Conference Finals, and then um, you know like it's similar to your time in the Knicks playing against the Celtics, right? I mean, this time you're playing a new big three in Wade, LeBron, and Bosh. Uh, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. any experience during that series that comes to mind, or or throughout that season? Uh, I mean, the the the, the most famous is the Lance Lebron. You know, that's the, that's the I can't think of a more popular uh, moment. You know, um, but you know, just just that com competition, man. It was we were all trying to figure out how to get over the hump. You know, and I wasn't. I won't pretend to say I was like a starter and getting big minutes during that time, but you know we all had to chip in and do what we could to, to have the team ready. So um, for me, it was it was it was great just to watch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like for yeah. real, for real, just keeping it on. Like that 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 series, you know, um, 
super competitive. You got to see Paul George coming into his own, Lance coming into his own, um, Dave doing what he does. You know, every, everybody was kind of like just chipping in, trying to figure out how to knock down this beast. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun to be a part of it. I got a couple minutes here and there, but yeah, yeah, man. You, <laughs> man. you killed it, man. You killed it. Um, yeah, I mean, did, did Lance ever talk to you about like the LeBron situation, or, or do you do you remember the guys talking about that in the locker room? Like, yeah, we, that was more of a media thing. Yeah, it's funny. We laugh about it, but like, it's yeah. In in, the, in that moment, nobody's really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We too focus on figuring out how to really yeah. again, you know, get get over the hump. Yeah. You laugh about it quick, and then you get back to the game. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's funny because like the media like just blew, like I think it just blew it up and I feel like it was just more than it really was right like and not a big deal not a big deal we yeah. I mean again, we, we definitely mentioned it but like it wasn't yeah it wasn't uh, we had a job to do yeah no absolutely man you remember uh you remember like what what the team the team strategy was or, or the game plan was playing against LeBron Wade and, and Bosch stop him yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you have to – he was uh, incredible, one of the best athletes of all time um, is. And, uh, you know, you, you, you try to funnel him into help and close out the shooters, you know. Um, then you had D-Wade, who was another problem. You know, you just – you had to trust your trust your one-on-one defense, but guys had to be ready to help whenever it was necessary. Like, you know, typical yeah. against any elite team. Yeah, no. I know, because that must have felt similar, right? Like playing against the Celtics or not? Like with Pierce, KG? And- Very different styles. Really? Different styles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you got to think, even you know, LeBron, LeBron and Paul are like not the same player. You know what I mean? And, mm. uh, you know, D Wade and Ray Allen, not the same player. KG and Chris Bosch, not the same player. So very, very different core nucleus. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, the principles in the sense that, you know, there's so many weapons on the floor that you got to be able to guard your own at least a little bit. Right. And everybody else around you has to be alert that, okay, he's playing against somebody pretty serious, so let's help each other. That's right. dumbing, down the, dumbing down the scheme. Like it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Keep, yeah. yeah, no, man. Hey, I mean, that's that's dope. I mean, you got to play against – you got to play in some pretty cool series, man. So that's that's dope. Um, you know, overall, you know, what what was your favorite moment of the, your NBA career or, or playing overseas? Um, I mean, wh- whether that's you enjoyed playing with the Knicks or Pacers better, um, you know, because I, I know you said, like, initially you didn't really, um, you know, you weren't, you know, fond, you know, moving to Indiana. But, um, you know, overall, I mean, did you have an experience that really stuck out to you? Uh, I mean, I had so many moments, man. Like, I don't want to single out. As a, from a basketball perspective, but my right. favorite NBA experience was had nothing to do with any of my teammates. It was literally after the game, hugging my mom, you know, mm-hmm. after my first NBA game. Yeah. There's there's no playoff, big game. I had some nights with big numbers, and we made the playoffs, and, you know, I got to get in the playoffs sometimes, and this type of game winners, nothing. Nothing, to ma- nothing compared to the first game, just hugging my mom after it was all over and saying I made it to the NBA. It's nothing bigger. To me. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's that's dope. I mean, yeah, because it sounds like you always had that goal, right, of, like, making it to the NBA, right? Like, even when you were overseas, because you were killing it overseas and you had a great, like, career in college as well. Did you always know you wanted – like, you were always going for the NBA? For sure. I mean, since a child, man, that's always been the goal. Again, you know, talking about my brother, like, that was, that was our goal. And, um, you know, I always wanted to try to – uh, making proud in that respect. So, yeah, it's always been about that. I mean, I've had my nights and my days where I started to doubt and the frustration builds up. And, man, this is not going to work. It doesn't look, it's not moving like I want it to move. Um, I know what that feels like, you know. Um, but uh, you keep you keep trying to do the best thing you can that day. Um, and it, it worked out for me, you know. And I'm, I'm very blessed to, to say that. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. Um, thanks for taking the time, man. Um, yeah, how are you doing overall today? Like, I saw you, you do some coaching in clinics, right, um, once in a while? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's not coaching. That's So that's uh, one of the things I appreciate you asking me that, too. Um, one thing I'm trying to tell people about, every sign-up counts. So, like, you know, if you sign up for me, you know, uh, but <laughs> experts. Uh, hey, I, I might need yeah. it, bro. My, my shot's no. looking rough uh, right now. <laughs> but it's not a coaching thing, just to be clear. It's a, it's a, 
it's for people that want to play basketball, you know, locally. Um, pick, it's two, there's two sides of it. The side I'm actually most excited about, there's a showcase side for guys who haven't gotten a, 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 the look that they want. Mm-hmm. We're trying to provide a showcase um, for, for guys to get opportunities and maybe make it overseas or, you know, mm-hmm. play at a higher level than they have been. Right. Second, second part of it, the main part of it, um, is, you know, local runs, finding runs for people to come and play. And, you know, you may not know the gym in your area, but there's probably 10 people in your area that want to play, sign up, and we can we can arrange runs for you. Right. Um, so it has the networking component, and, um, you know, you can get in shape and do it do it the fun way with playing basketball. So. Oh, that's, that's dope. Man. Uber, Uber for uh, pickup. Yeah. <laughs> you can pick up. <laughs> hey, man. That's dope. Yeah. So did you start that? Did you start that? Like, when did you start that? Um, I didn't start that. This is Ron's. Um, I have, I can say I, I have influence over direction, but um, like we've partnered and I've, I've helped where it is today for sure. Um, but no, it's, it's, this is Ron's baby and I'm honored to be a part of this thing and uh, hopefully continue um, to help it grow. That's, that's, yeah. that's where I'm Absolutely, man. Hey, yo, I might have to work on my jump shot, low key. <laughs> yeah, hey, listen, man, that's, and there's different levels. It's not, again, it's not. Yeah. Uh, every every there's different levels. It's not like you know, everybody come out and play against me one on one or yeah. something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not that type. Of I don't place. know if I'm up for that just yet, man. Yeah, I, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I got a long way to go. Yeah, we try to match people where they want to be and like where the, wherever their comfort level is. Um, but you know, we do want to have we have a lot of people that are ambassadors that are. Some, you know, some famous whatever that'll pop up and, and come out and show support. Um, so it's, it should be a fun and fun experience for a lot of people to go out and meet new people um, and, and go out and play the game of basketball that we all love. Yeah. Now, yo, let me uh, let me know if you ever if you guys ever need help with that or you know love to spread the word of of uh, what you guys are doing. That's dope. So um, yeah, keep it up and appreciate it and. Uh, yeah, if you guys come down to Boston, let me know, man. Let me know. <laughs> Absolutely. We, no, we're having some conversations with some people out there. That's an actual fact. So we should be out there. That should be one of the – we're going to be L.A., New York for sure. But Boston is like second tier, like what second wave should be fully full on pretty soon out there. Yeah. When, when are you guys in uh, L.A., New York? Is that soon or? We should be. We should be launched. Literally, I got a text yesterday from Ron and, uh, from Meta, and literally, I would say a few weeks away. Yeah. From official, like we're obviously twi- you know, the last minute tweaks and stuff. So you never yeah. want to make a promise or on a set date until you're for sure, for sure. But yeah, yeah, we're yeah. right around the corner. Sweet man, yo, keep it up, man. Appreciate uh, you taking the time, Chris. Stay in touch. Let me know if you guys need anything. And uh, yeah, it was awesome hearing your story, man. Appreciate. It. Yes, sir. Great talking to you, my friend. Yeah, awesome, man. Appreciate it. Have a good one.